Hi and welcome to Club Erie. Today we want to show you how to properly test a fuel pump. Well, we happen to be working on a, it's like a 95 Cadillac Eldorado. But this is what you should do when you're testing a fuel pump before you go ahead and just decide to replace it because you have no fuel pressure. First you would test it with a fuel pressure gauge obviously, which not everybody has, but there's a couple of different methods for that. Uh, we do have one set up right here. So we had to hook this one in, you, take, you actually take out the fuel filter and you just hook each side, you take the filter out and hook one side to where the filter comes out, one side where the filter goes in. You turn the key on, you look at the gauge and make sure you have pressure. The proper pressure would be listed in, uh, in some type of program. We happen to use all data. As you can see, we pulled up a wire diagram here. We just wanted to make sure we got the right wires, which you should all do. You don't want to be poking around if, uh, Power Pro, which I'm going to show you in a minute, but here you see you got your black ground and they show you your gray is going to be your positive. And that's that's right at the tank. So there's your fuel pump. You always want to pull a diagram when you're doing stuff like this. This is a real handy tool here. It's called the Power Probe. It run, we got this wire run all the way under the car here, put it wherever you want to put it and up to the battery, one on positive, one on negative. It's marked, you can't really mess it up. Very handy tool. But you also have to be real careful. You can't just go pushing a power probe into a, a engine harness, any kind of harness, and start hitting power or ground because you have the option. If you look at the button, they got a toggle button here. You have the option. So you don't want to just go poking in there and poking power. You could actually fry your computer. Not a good thing. So we're going to go ahead and show you. We already pulled the diagrams. We're going to show you this test. And uh, hopefully you can diag diagnose your own fuel pump in the future. Okay, so I'm going to go up and climb the ladder and turn the key on when Chad tells me to so he can stay down here and show you what he's doing. He's going to test the plug for power coming from the engine harness to make sure we have power. And then he can actually put power to the fuel pump itself. There's actually a pigtail right here. So this would be the harness. This is the pump or the harness? That's the harness from the vehicle. Okay, yeah. So here's the harness from the vehicle. So here's where he wants to test. You're going to find a gray and black wire in here. You can see there's five wires here, but you can clearly see there's a gray one and there's a black one. Right? Solid black, not the gray, this, not the black and gray. This one over here. Yeah, so we're testing these two right here. Yep. So those are the two he's going to be poking here. Then he can come up, actually, this is the actual plug going to the fuel pump. It goes directly to the pump. So he can actually hook onto the ground to that and power that up and just see if he can make it power up himself. And that would you'd use that in a situation where you weren't getting power from the computer, you just wanted to test your pump, you could actually do that. Here, uh, we're gonna show you that we're actually getting power, but we'll show you both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and run up the ladder and Chad's gonna handle it from down here. All right, so as you can see here from the plug that we're coming from the vehicle right here, this is gonna be our ground. As you can see, as when the light lights up green, it's a ground signal. And this one right here that we're gonna connect is actually coming from the fuse or the relay from the vehicle. Go ahead, Craig, turn the key on. So there, it's showing that we have proper voltage to do this circuit, and of course it timed out. Craig, cycle the key again, and there it goes again. So that's how we know that we're getting proper power to the, uh, to the fuel pump itself. All right, Craig, you can come down if you want. Do you want this vehicle all the way off? Uh, yes, please. So now I'm going to go up here and actually probe the positive side of the pump. So I got the ground of the power probe already connected. And right here we got the fuel pressure, uh, fuel pressure tester. And when I activate the pump, here I'll do it again. We can hear it, but we have no pressure. Oh, I guess you can see with the gauge. I was going to show you coming through. Yeah, go ahead and uh, squeeze the release trigger and show that the gas is actually coming out, but slowly it's coming out. So there I'm squeezed, but that's just not enough so pressure there. So we got there. gas coming out, but there's just no pressure. Uh, one or two things that's going on with this pump. One, it could be very weak, or two, that there's a line inside that connects from the fuel pump to the center that is busted. Either way, we got to drop the tank and do this job properly. Here I already have the gas tank already down. 
um, I'll show you how to take this out. We pre-drained this gas tank so we can do this job a little easier. It had plenty of gas in it. It had over three quarters of a tank of gas. Uh, some of the tools that we're going to be using today, this right here is a, um, a gas tank cooler. You can get it anywhere. It's made by Blue Point. There's a part number on here. It's hard to see. Um, FLR630 is the part number. It's made by Blue Point. It's always good and recommended to use the proper tools to do the job. I'm going to show you how to use this tool and also figure out what happened to this pump inside here. Here we're just going to size up the tool, just loosen up the butterfly nuts here that that's on the tool. Get nice and close, grab a pair of pliers, give them a little bit more of a better snug, but nothing moves. Here I'm going to be using a ratchet with a 14 millimeter uh, socket to take this uh, cap off. Move the cap, no damage. We didn't use a pick or a hammer or anything to take this off. There are special tools that do this job correctly, which is this one. So here's the pump. Let's see what happens. Yep. Exactly what we thought. Hold on, let me grab a bucket so we don't make a mess. Here I'm going to show you the actual problem with this pump, why it failed. As you can see here, there's a nice little break inside the line. Uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and put a whole brand new sending unit in. We're just going to sum up this video because we don't have the, uh, the fuel module yet. So what I like to do with these uh, rings, before I put them back on, I put a little bit of uh, grease. This one right here is Vaseline or mineral oil. And what I do, I just brush it in here. And what this does, is it actually makes it very, very easy to screw this back on. So when you're using the tool, Everything goes on really nice. And you can tighten it down without no effort because you have no resistance because now that you grease the, the ring here. Any idea how tight you make that? Uh, every manufacturer is specific about what they have for their tank tightening. Um, this one right here, we're going to look it up before we go and we're going to use the digital torque wrench on this with the 14 millimeter socket and we're going to tighten it down to specs and we're going to put this gas tank in and start it up and go from there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment if you would. We'd like to know that uh, you actually learned something.